So the U.S. Department of Justice unsealed an indictment on Wednesday claiming that a Russian state media company, RT, is accused of bankrolling nearly a $10 million campaign through a company that wasn't explicitly named in the indictment, but is an exact match for the Tennessee-based media company named Tenet. Tenet employs a bunch of different conservative, like, quote-unquote, influencers, right? There were six main ones that were also not mentioned in the indictment, but are known as public figures. There are Tim Pool, Benny J. Johnson, Dave Rubin, Taylor Hansen, Matt Christensen, and Lauren Southern. There's been over 2,000 videos that were posted by Tenet in the past 10 months, and they've been viewed by more than 16 million people. They've got a collective over 16 million views on YouTube alone, according to the indictment. I'm going to actually read the indictment to you so you guys can see what the indictment actually says, and this isn't going to be like me interpreting it. It's going to be like, this is what the indictment actually says in it. This is RT, formerly known as Russia Today, is a state controlled media outlet funded and directed by the government of Russia. After Russia invaded Ukraine in February of 2022, Russia Today was sanctioned, dropped by distributors, and ultimately forced to cease formal operations in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the European Union. In response, RT created in words of its editor-in-chief, an entire empire of covert projects designed to shape public opinion in Western audiences. One of RT's covert projects, as described herein, is its funding and direction of a Tennessee-based online content creation company, in parentheses, U.S. Company TAC-1. That U.S. Company TAC-1, when they're saying that, they're referring to Tenet Media, but they don't explicitly mention the name of the company. Say my name. Now, over the past year, uh, Russia Today and its employees have deployed nearly $10 million laundered through a network of foreign shell entities to fund and direct U.S. Company 1. U.S. Company 1 publishes English language videos on multiple social media channels channels including TikTok, Instagram, X, and YouTube. Using multiple fake personas, they edited, posted, and directed the posting by US Company Tac One of hundreds of videos. Many of the videos published by US Company One contain commentary on events and issues in the United States, such as immigration, inflation, and other topics related to domestic and foreign policy. While the views expressed in the videos are not uniform, the subject matter and content of the videos are often consistent with the government of Russia's interest in amplifying US domestic divisions in order to weaken U.S. opposition to core government of Russia interests, such as its ongoing war in Ukraine. Since publicly launching in or about November of 2023, the U.S. company TAC-1 has posted nearly 2,000 videos that have garnered more than 16 million views on YouTube alone. U.S. Company One never disclosed to its viewers that it was funded and directed by RT, nor did U.S. Company One or its founders and principal executives, Founder One and Founder Two, register with the Attorney General as an agent of a foreign principal as required by law. Now, Founder One and Founder Two also worked together to deceive two U.S. online commentators, Commentator One and Commentator Two, who have respectively over 2.4 million and 1.3 million YouTube subscribers. There's a lot of people out there that are saying that Tim Pool and Benny Johnson are the two people that they're referring to in the indictment when they're talking talking about commentator one and commentator two, because those are the two people that have the largest following. So the 1.3 million subscribers on YouTube is Tim Pool, and Benny Johnson has 2.39 million subscribers on YouTube. So almost 2.4. So those are the two people that they're talking about in this indictment when they're referring to commentator one and commentator two. Founder one and founder two contracted with commentator one and commentator two to produce videos using commentator ones and commentators two's own names and leveraging their existing audiences for license and publication by U.S. Company One. Founder One and Founder Two work together to mask U.S. Company One's true source of funding, i.e. RT, or Russia Today, by falsely portraying to Commentator One and Commentator Two that U.S. Company One was sponsored by a private investor named Edward Gregorian. So Benny Johnson and Tim Pool were not aware that they were spreading all of this Russian propaganda, essentially. They didn't know that the sponsored all these videos were coming from Russia. They were being told that they were from some random investor, some private investor. In truth and in fact, Gregorian was a fictional persona. For example, during contract negotiations, Commentator One requested that Founder One provide a profile or article on Edward Gregorian. In response, Founder One sent Commentator One a one-page profile 
provided to Founder One by another fictional persona purporting to represent Edward Gregorian, falsely describing him as an accomplished finance professional who had held various positions in Brussels and France at a multinational bank, including Director of Private Banking Division and Wealth Management. After receiving the fictitious profile, Commentator One agreed to work with U.S. Company One and produced approximately 130 videos that were published on U.S. Company One's platform. The next piece is back Background on Russian influence operations. Russia Today is a Russian state funded and state directed media outlet. As Russia Today's editor in chief has publicly acknowledged, since Russia Today receives budget from the state, it must complete tasks given by the state. For nearly two decades, Russia Today has promoted the objectives of the government of Russia by publishing disinformation and propaganda, leveraging its international network to amplify the government of Russia's message to foreign audiences and using its guise as a conventional media outlet to lend credibility to that message. RT's propaganda is most obvious when it reports on matters of importance to the government of Russia, such as public opinion about Ukraine and the United States. When direct propaganda is not effective, however, RT has pursued malign influence campaigns in countries opposed to its policies, including the United States, in an effort to sow domestic divisions and thereby weaken opposition to the government of Russia's objectives. For example, in discussing RT's coverage of the United Kingdom's exit from the European Union in 2016, an RT journalist recalled to an academic researcher, I asked my editor, what is RT's line for this Brexit? And he said, quote, anything that causes chaos is RT's line. Yeah, obviously, because they're going to benefit from chaos happening in, you know, any other nation. Oh, my God. OK, it's happening. Everybody just calm down. In or about March 2022, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 22, the European Union, the United Kingdom and Canada banned broadcasting by Russia Today. That same month, Russia Today also ceased its operations in the United States after major television distributors dropped the network. But as RT itself has boasted, despite its post-March 2022 bans on broadcasting and lack of formal distribution channels in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom and the European Union, the government of Russia continues to use RT to direct disinformation and propaganda at Western audiences. For example, on or about February 25th, 2024, RT's editor-in-chief declared during a Russia television appearance that, quote, the public opinion in the West is changing very rapidly and very cheerfully, end quote, due in part to RT. RT's editor-in-chief further explained that despite being banished everywhere on February 25th, referring to the state of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 22, Russia today had built an enormous network, an entire empire of covert projects that is working with public opinion, bringing truth to Western audiences. As set forth below, Hello, U.S. Company One is one of RT's covert projects in the United States, talking about Tenet Media. The defendant is a citizen of Russia and an employee of RT. Kalashnikov has identified himself as the deputy chief of the digital media projects department for RT, is a member of an internal RT email distribution list reserved for leaders at RT, and manages multiple RT covert distribution channels in the United States, including Company Tech One. As set forth below, Founder One introduced Kalashnikov to U.S. Company One one, employees, and affiliates as a purported outside editor, and Kalashnikov edited U.S. Company One content without disclosing that he was working for Russia Today. Kalashnikov also participated in an internal U.S. Company One messaging group comprised solely of Kalashnikov, Founder One, Founder Two, and an individual purporting to act as a representative of U.S. Company One's investor, Edward Gregorian, but who was in fact a fake persona, as described below. In that messaging group, Kalashnikov monitored discussions of among other things, U.S. Company One One's funding, hiring, and contract negotiations with Commentator One and Commentator Two. Elena Afan Afansieva, aka Lena, the defendant, is a citizen of Russia and an employee of Russia Today. Afanasieva has identified herself on social media as a producer at RT, dealing with overseas affairs and news. As set forth below, Kalishnikov introduced Afanasieva to Company One staff and contributors as a member of Kalishnikov's editing team. And Afanasieva Eva collected information from and gave it direction to U.S. Company One personnel on behalf of RT 
to covert capacity. She also utilized multiple fake personas at US Company One, including Helena Shudra and Victoria Pesti. Founder One and Founder Two are foreign nationals who reside in the United States. Founder One and Founder Two jointly control and operate US Company One, and they are the only authorized signatories for US Company One's business checking account, the US Company One's banking account. So the two founders of Tenet Media are Canadian Lauren Chen and her husband, Liam Donovan. They still have yet not publicly commented or commented on the scandal, although there's been some fallout already. Apparently, Chen had a broadcasting gig with Blaze Media, and she has since lost that position. Also, they already wiped all of the episodes with her in it from her podcast from Spotify and deleted her contributor page from its website as well. Um, Blaze Media CEO Tyler Carden told uh, some folks that the conservative anchor has been terminated. Hasta la vista. Baby. Before operating U.S. Company One for RT, as set forth below, Founder One and Founder Two worked directly for RT and its affiliates, including as follows. From in or about March 2021 to in or about February of 2022, Founder One created videos, posted social media content, and wrote articles pursuant to a written contract between Founder One's Canadian company which is Canadian Company One. So Founder One's Canadian Company obviously is Lauren Chen because she's from Canada. They even say Canadian Company, so it's like, okay, that's definitely who they're talking about in this indictment, even though they don't actually plainly say who it is. This content generally consisted of English language social commentary. RT directly published some of Founder One's paid work while Founder One posted other of Founder One's paid work on Founder One's personal accounts without attribution to Russia Today. For example, Founder One's invoices reflect that Founder One billed TV Novosti for approximately 217 videos, which approximately 209 were published on Founder One's personal YouTube channels. Founder One also wrote approximately 25 opinion articles that were published on Russia Today's website, at least 19 of which Founder One billed to Anno TV Novosti. None of Founder One's articles disclosed that Founder One was paid by Art Russia Today to write them. Lauren Chen was like deep, deep in it. To create content for Russia Today pursuant to Founder One's written contract, Founder One worked with Founder Two and two individual producers, Producer One and Producer Two, who later joined US Company One. Russia Today invited Founder One to appear on Russia Today television programming, created a dedicated page on Russia Today's website identifying Founder One as a contributor, and featuring Founder One's articles and provided an official letter on Russia Today's letterhead designating Founder One and Founder Two as essential workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. In private correspondence, however, Founder One and Founder Two recognized that truthfully disclosing their affiliation with Russia Today made it more difficult for them to do business in the United States. For example, in a July 2021 email inviting a contact to apply for a job with Russia Today, Founder One wrote that Russia Today's budget is gonna be larger, but acknowledged, quote, I know being Russian, some folks in the United States aren't too hot on them, LOL, end quote. They were 100% conscious of what was going on. As another example, in a private exchange on the messaging platform Discord in February 2022, producer one told founder two that, quote, when I was asking people if they wanted to interview, many said yes until I said I was with Russia today, so I switched to saying I was just working for founder one. Founder two replied, haha, not surprised. In their private correspondence while working directly for Russia Today pursuant to Founder One's written contract, Founder One and Founder Two regularly referred to their sponsor, Russia Today, as the Russians. For example, on or about May 12th, 2021, Founder Two messaged Founder One on Discord, quote, so we're billing the Russians from the corporation, right? End quote. On or about May 22nd, 2021, Founder One messaged Founder Two on Discord, quote, also the Russians paid. So we're good to bill them for the second month, I guess, end quote. On or about June 2nd, 2021, Founder One messaged Founder Two on Discord, quote, also I say we bill the Russians for last month once we're done the extra op-eds, referring to Founder One's paid opinion articles for Russia Today. And on or about January 5th of 2022, Founder Two messaged an acquaintance on Discord about paid leave that quote, the Russians had offered to founder one. Man, they were deep on this. From in or about October, 2021 to in or about May, 2022, separate and apart from founder one's contract with Russia Today's parent organization, Anno TV Novosti, founder two also worked directly for Russia Today and with Rupley GmbH, Russia Today's German subsidiary. Founder two's paid work for Russia Today included, among other things, preparing English language text messages describing news events. During this 
time, founder two and Kalashnikov appear to have had an overlapping business contracts. On or about May 18th of 2022, Rupley GmbH employee sent a Russian language email to six recipients, including founder two and Kalashnikov, requesting that they send their work email addresses to gain access to Rupley's website. U.S. Company One Tenant is a United States corporation established under the laws of Tennessee. Founder One has described U.S. Company One Tenant as the U.S. subsidiary of Founder One's Canadian company, Canadian Company One. As set forth above, from in or about March 2021 to in or about February 2022, Founder One used Canadian Company TAC One to produce content for Russia Today pursuant to a written contract. Founder One incorporated U.S. Company One on or about January 19th of 2022 and applied with the Tennessee Department of State to transact business under its current operating name, which Company One uses on its website and social media channels on or about May 22nd of 2023. On its website, U.S. Company One Tenant describes itself as a network of heterodox commentators that focus on Western political and cultural issues, end quote, and identifies six commentators, including Commentator One and Commentator Two, Tim Pool and Benny Johnson as its talent. U.S. Company One regularly posts videos featuring these commentators as well as other videos that do not feature the commentators across an array of social media channels including YouTube, TikTok, X, Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. To support the production and publication of its videos, U.S. Company One employs three staff producers, Producer One, Producer Two, and a third individual, Producer Three, but they didn't name who they were. In a purported outside editing firm staffed by, among others, Kalashnikov and Afansieva. Jesus, this is a lot. Background on the Foreign Agents Registration Act. This ought to be good. The Foreign Agents Registration Act, FARA, 22 U.S.C. 611 et sec is a registration and disclosure statute that requires any person acting or agreeing to act in the United States as an agent of a foreign principal to register with the attorney general if he or she is engaging or agreeing to engage directly or through another person in certain types of conduct for or in the interest of the foreign principal. Conduct requiring registration under FARA includes, as is relevant here, political activities, acting as a publicity agent or information service employee and dispersing money for or in the interests of the foreign principal. FARA registrations are made to the Foreign Agents Registration Act Unit of the Department of Justice's National Security Division. It is a crime to fail to register when required under FARA. The purpose of FARA is to prevent covert influence by foreign principals, which include foreign governments, companies, and persons located outside the United States. Proper registration under FARA allows the U.S. government and public and private audiences audiences to evaluate the statements and activities of individuals who are serving as agents of foreign principals in light of their status as foreign agents. Basically, it's just like some transparency saying like, hey, if you are getting paid by a foreign entity that's meant to talk about politics or any type of influence, like you have to disclose that publicly. Among other things, fair registration reveals the identity of the foreign principal on whose behalf the registrant performs services, the types of services the registrant provides the foreign principal, and the source and amount of compensation the registrant receives from the foreign principal. So yeah, you got to disclose Everything. if you're going to work for a foreign principal, like a foreign agency, foreign entity. FARA registration statements are publicly accessible on the website of the FARA unit. In addition, FARA registrants are required to label informational materials transmitted within the United States with a conspicuous statement disclosing that the materials are distributed by the agent on behalf of the foreign principal. Russia Today's covert operations through U.S. Company One, through Tenet. In or about December 2022, Founder One began working with an individual operating under the fictitious name Edward Gregorian and three purported representatives of Edward Gregorian, Persona 1, and two additional purported representatives, Persona 2 and Persona 3, to launch a new YouTube channel initially under the name Viewpoint Productions. On or about January 10th of 2023, Persona 2 told Founder 1 that Founder 1's first task was to find a personality that could serve as the face of the channel and that for the right candidate we're willing to pay around one to two million dollars per year. Dude, that's a lot of money. Influencer talent scouting services with Founder One listed as the agent and Hungarian entity, Hungarian Shell Entity TAC One, listed as the client. Hungarian Shell Entity One has no publicly available website. In exchange for the Founder One services, the proposed contract awarded Founder One $8,000 per month, plus a percentage of any deals that Founder One closed with influencers. Over the next several months, while Founder One continued to negotiate Founder One's contract, Founder One accepted 
accepted interim payments and began to scout for influencers for the new YouTube channel for Edward Gregorian. Edward Gregorian, right? For Russia Today. Beginning in or about February 2023, Founder One solicited Commentator One and Commentator Two to perform work on behalf of Edward Gregorian. For example, on or about February 6th of 2023, Persona One emailed Founder One a short list of candidates for the YouTube channel, including Commentator One and Commentator Two. In the same email, Persona One attached a receipt for an $8,000 money transfer from an entity in the Czech Republic, Czech Shell Entity One, to Founder One's Canadian company, Canadian Company One. Persona One requested that Founder One submit an invoice for Founder One's consultation services to Czech Shell Co Entity One, which Persona One described as our Czech sister company. Czech Shell Entity One has a website purporting to sell automobile parts, but also listed unrelated services like Cyber Armor Suite fortifying your digital defenses. The website makes no mention of Edward Gregorian, Persona One, Persona Two, Persona Three, Viewpoint Productions, or Hungarian shell entity one on or about february 6 of 2023 founder one responded to persona 2 that founder one had let founder 2 quote who I work with and who handles finances know to get an invoice done, end quote. Founder 2 subsequently prepared an invoice from Canadian Company 1 to check shell entity 1, which Founder 2 transmitted to Founder 1 and which Founder 1 then emailed to Persona 1. In Founder 1's February 6, 2023 response to Persona 1, Founder 1 also advised that Founder 1 had reached out to Commentator 1 and, quote, will be speaking with him today, end quote. With respect to Commentator Commentator 2, Founder 1 cautioned that a contract would likely cost, quote, well over $2 million a year, end quote. Jesus. The next day on or about February 7th of 2023, Persona 1 responded that Mr. Gregorian, misspelling the name of Persona 1's purported employer, Edward Gregorian, was okay with over $2 million as long as we get the right person on board under the right conditions. Founder 1 agreed to contact Commentator 2 as well. That's when they were starting to reach out to Tim Pool and Benny Johnson. On or about February 8th of 2023, Founder One reported to Persona One on Founder One's outreach to Commentator One and Commentator Two. Founder One advised that Commentator One said, quote, it would need to be closer to 5 million yearly for him to be interested. Commentator Two said, quote, it would take $100,000 per weekly episode to make it worth his while. Founder One cautioned that, quote, from a profitability standpoint, it would be very hard for Viewpoint to recoup the costs for the likes of Commentator 1 and Commentator 2 based on ad revenue from web traffic or sponsors alone. Despite Founder 1's warning that Commentator 1 and Commentator 2 would not be profitable to employ, on or about February 14th, 2023, Persona 1 informed Founder 1 that, quote, we would love to move forward with Commentator 1 and Commentator 2. Yeah, we'll spend the money. Who cares? We're getting what we want. On or about February 17th of 2023, Founder 1 sent an email introducing Commentator 2 to Edward Gregor. Gregorian, Persona 1 and Persona 2. The parties arranged a call between Commentator 2 and Edward Gregorian, which took place on or about February 22 of 2023. In scheduling the call, Commentator 2 requested that Edward Gregorian call Commentator 2's cell phone. Instead, Persona 2 asked that the call take place on WhatsApp or Zoom. Both applicants offer encrypted communications and the ability to place voice calls through voice over IP technology capable of obfuscating the physical location of a caller. On or about February 22, of 2023, Founder One emailed Persona One that Founder One had spoken with Commentator Two, who was, quote, happy with the licensing arrangement that was discussed on Commentator 2's call with Edward Gregorian. Founder 1 continued, however, that Commentator 2, quote, still would like to know more about the company and who he will be working with, end quote. Founder 1 added that Founder 1 had assured Commentator 2 that as we finalize the contract and begin working to put his show together and coordinate the launch, everyone will have time to get to know each other and feel less like strangers. On or about February 28th of 2020, 23, Founder One emailed Persona One that Founder One had spoken with Commentator One, who would, quote, like some material about Mr. Gregorian to learn a bit about who Commentator One would be working with, end quote. Founder One asked them if there were any links that they could forward to Commentator One about Edward Gregorian. On or about March 2nd, 2023, Persona One responded to Founder One's email, writing that Persona One was unsure that Mr. Gregorian gave out any public interviews, but you could send Commentator One to our 
LinkedIn page with a hyperlink to a LinkedIn page for Viewpoint Productions. Persona One also attached a receipt for another $8,000 money transfer from a Czech shell entity one to Canadian company one. This is bananas. Like this is insane. It's crazy how deep this went. On or about April 21st, 2023, and again on April 24th, 2023, Founder One performed Google searches for Edward Gregorian and for bank number one, Edward Gregorian, as of in or about August 2024. Neither Google search returns any results for a person by that name, much less any web pages describing an Edward Gregorian as a finance professional affiliated with Bank One. On or about April 24th, 2023, Founder One emailed Persona One that Commentator One was, quote, really interested on seeing some materials on Edward before Commentator One feels comfortable moving forward. Is there anything we can provide Commentator One with? Persona One responded that we'll send you a profile on Mr. Gregorian that you could send over to Commentator One. On or about May 4th, 2023, Persona One emailed Founder One the CV to provide Commentator One. That profile is reproduced with redactions and blurring below. They list like a fake Edward Gregorian profile with a bunch of stuff that he's done dating back to like the 90s. His vision, what, what his plans are. Edward Gregorian, experienced finance professional and investor, deeply engaged in business and philanthropy, leveraging skills and resources to drive positive impact, supporting a range of organizations worldwide with a dynamic presence, mainly in Brussels and London, engaging in personal and professional pursuits in each location with a focus on poverty alleviation, championing free speech and advocating for social justice causes. Born in Brussels in 1975 to a French Armenian father and Belgian mother. It's not a lie if you believe it. Bank One's affiliate in the United States has no record of an Edward Gregorian ever being employed by Bank One, nor as set forth below do Google searches for Bank One Edward Gregorian yield any results for a person by that name. Other irregularities in Founder One's email correspondence further signal that Edward Gregorian is purported representatives Persona One through Persona Three were all fake personas. For example, by on or about February 16th of 2023, Persona One had misspelled the surname of his purported boss as Gregorian rather than Gregorian in at least four separate emails to Founder One. On or about February 10th of 2023, Persona 3 sent an email to a potential influencer copying Founder One and signed the email as Edward Gregorian rather than as Persona 3. After the email, recipient expressed confusion as to whether the sender was Edward Gregorian or Persona 3. Persona 3 quickly responded in part, quote, Edward forwarded this email to me and asked me to reply on his behalf, end quote. Digital forensic evidence further confirmed Confirms that Edward Gregorian and Persona 1 through Persona 3 were in truth and in fact the same individual. God, dude, this is insane. Like, there was so much stuff going on. Like, bottom line is Lauren Chen and her husband, they they screwed up. They screwed the pooch on this one. There's no if, ands, or buts about it, man. Founder One transmitted the Edward Gregorian profile to Commentator One to persuade Commentator One to perform work on behalf of Edward Gregorian. On or about May 12th, 2023, Founder One reported to Persona One that Commentator One had, quote, a problem with the profile we sent over, specifically the reference to social justice. I think it may be because that's usually a term used by liberals, but we're trying to create a conservative network, end quote. Founder One suggested that Commentator One and Edward could simply speak together to clarify the profile. On or about June 2nd of 2023, Edward Gregorian circulated an email to Founder One and to Commentator One's assistant, scheduling a Zoom meeting for 5 p.m. Paris that day. At approximately 8.50 a.m. Central Time that day, Edward Gregorian replied to his earlier email saying, quote, I am there guys end quote the time in fact was 3 58 p.m in paris but it was 4 58 p.m in moscow <laughs> approximately two minutes later edward gregorian performed a google search for time in paris edward gregorian then replied again to his email in part sorry wrong hour didn't sync the calendar after further negotiations in which founder two also participated founder one and the purported representatives of edward gregorian secured contracts with commentator one and commentator two specifically commentator one's contract benny johnson which was between Commentator One's production company and U.S. Company One, provided for four weekly videos to be hosted by Commentator One and live streamed by U.S. Company One in exchange for a monthly fee of $400,000, plus a $100,000 signing bonus and an additional performance bonus. Show me the money! 
Commentators One's production company agreed that any and all content created under this agreement shall be the property of US Company One. So Benny Johnson agreed for a monthly fee of $400,000 and a $100,000 signing bonus. These people agreed on it. You didn't think that was like odd, like weird? The only way I know somebody would be able to get a contract like that is if like you were working directly for like an actual government. I don't care who who the influencer is. Like they're not gonna pay you $100,000 per video. There would have been some more questions for sure. I don't know what they were thinking going through this. I like money. Commentator two, Tim Pool's contract. So Tim Pool's contract, which was between Commentator two's production company and US company one, provided for weekly videos to be hosted by Commentator two and live streamed by US company one in exchange for a fee of $100,000 per video. Commentator two's production company granted US company one a non-exclusive, non-transferable license during the applicable license term to display, transmit, and distribute the license content. In or about mid-2023, as Founder One worked to recruit Commentator One and Commentator Two to perform work on behalf of Edward Gregorian, Founder One began negotiating an expanding role for Founder One and Founder Two and U.S. Company One in their developing enterprise as set forth below. On or about March 31st of 2023, Persona One emailed Founder One a draft of the new contract that we would like to offer. Persona One described the new contract as consisting of two stages, quote, the pre-talent signing where your scope of work is similar to now and quote the post talent signing which is after we sign commentator two and commentator one with your help end quote persona one advised that quote the scope of your work will grow substantially to include managing the channel end quote, in the post-talent signing phase with new areas of responsibility and our new offered compensation. In a subsequent email on or about April 14th of 2023, Persona One informed Founder One that the management and marketing for the new platform's social media accounts would be done by the Russian firm we agreed to hire. But you will, of course, be the CEO and set the working standard and path for them to follow. And possibly you could hire a few more people from your side to further handle the operational side of things. On or about April 17th, of 2023, Founder One replied in part that Founder One was happy to work with the Russian firm. As set forth below, the Russian firm consisted of Kalashnikov and Afanai Sieva, who later monitored and directed U.S. Company One's activities under the guise of an outside editing firm. Founder Two worked closely with Founder One to negotiate their expanded business arrangement with Edward Gregorian. For example, in private messages on Discord on or about April 28, 2023, Founder Two messaged Founder One that, quote, they, the investors, have full rights to the IP. And so if we grow the platform, they can still technically take it away, end quote. Founder One replied that the French clarified that we own the channel, but they own the rights to the content. And so in the event of a split, I think we'd either need to pay them out for the rights or remove the videos, but we'd keep the platform, i.e. company, US Company One or Tenant. Founder Two also helped Founder One recruit additional commentators to work for US Company One and Edward Gregorian. For example, on or about May 22nd of 2023, Founder One messaged Founder Two on Discord that Founder One needed to send a prospectus for the company to a potential commentator, Commentator Three. Founder Two responded with proposed talking points for the prospectus and added, quote, though I think we should probably borrow some of Gregorian's language here. Commentator 3 later agreed to work for US Company 1. On or about May 12th, 2023, Founder 1 sent an email to Persona 1 in which Founder 1 proposed that, quote, we keep the contract between us with my Canadian company, Canadian Company 1, but for Commentator 2's contract, it will be through our American subsidiary, US Company 1, end quote. In a subsequent email on or about May 19th, 2023, Founder 1 explained that Founder 1 wished for my personal payment to be under Canadian Company 1, but the payments for the influencers go Go directly to U.S. Company One. Okay, so all of the influencers that were getting paid out through Tenant, they were not getting paid through Lauren Chen's company out of Canada. On or about June 13th of 2023, consistent with Founder One's proposal, Persona One emailed Founder One a final service agreement that named Founder One Canadian Company One and U.S. Company One as the service providers. The contract provided for a monthly fee of $8,000 for the first stage, a monthly fee of $25,000 per month for the second stage after signing Commentator One and Commentator Two, and and additional performance incentives and commissions for engagements closed with talents. The client named on the contract was neither Edward Gregorian nor Hungarian Shell Entity One nor Czech Shell Entity One, but rather an entity based in the United Kingdom, UK Shell Entity One that has no website. The plot just keeps getting thicker and thicker. It just gets thicker and thicker and thicker. There's a candy floss, molasses. After forwarding the contract to Founder Two and discussing it with Founder Two on Discord, Founder One signed the 
contract. Despite describing U.S. Company One's investor to Commentator One and Commentator Two as Edward Gregorian, a purported finance professional in Western Europe, Founder One and Founder Two admitted to each other in their private communications that their investors were, in truth and in fact, the Russians. Yeah, Russia today, you knew the whole time. So they knew, Benny Johnson and Tim Pool didn't know, neither did any of the other influencers. Though, they should have been like suspicious of the high dollar amounts that they were being offered for these contracts because that's like insane and nobody's going to pay you that from a private company if it's not like legitimate you know and it's it's coming from a federal agency for sure the same term that founder one and founder two previously used to refer to russia today while working directly under contract with russia today as described above on or about may 27th of 2023 founder one messaged founder two on discord meaning like lauren chen messaging her husband leon donovan quote i'm gonna ask the russians about hiring producer two this coming week end quote approximately two days later founder one messaged producer two on discord quote here's a list of responsibilities i sent over to the investors to approve bringing you on wanting to hear back on the timeline salary end quote on or about august 8th of 2023 persona one informed founder one and founder two in discord that their request to hire a producer booker was approved next part is founder one and founder two await payment from moscow on or about may 31st of 2023 kalashnikov created a private discord server containing a channel initially comprised solely of kalashnikov founder one and persona one the investor discord channel kalashnikov employed the discord username kostya K, which includes a variant of his first name, Kostya, and the first initial of his last name, K. On approximately 38 occasions between in or about December 2023 and in or about January 2024, Kalashnikov's Discord account was accessed from a Moscow-based IP address that was also used to access Kalashnikov's personal Gmail account on approximately 10 occasions. On or about June 21st of 2023, Founder 2 joined the Investor Discord channel, describing Founder 2's role as mostly helping with the company's back end of things while founder one focuses on the more forward facing aspects in the investor discord channel founder one founder two and persona one purporting to act on half of edward gregorian discussed major decisions for u.s company one such as the hiring of staff contract negotiations with contributors including commentator one and commentator two and payments to u.s company one and commentators kalashnikov monitored and, and occasionally participated in those discussions founder two also used the investor discord channel to to, among other things, submit U.S. Company One's tenant, tenant's invoices to Persona One and to press for payment for, of those invoices. For example, on or about September 11th of 2023 at approximately 8.07 p.m. Central Time, Founder 2 wrote in the Investor Discord channel, quote, today marks two weeks since I submitted the invoice for August. Any idea for the delay? We are signing the large contracts and need to be certain we will get the funding to pay these people, end quote. Persona One did not immediately respond. While awaiting a reply from Persona one founder one searched for the then current time in moscow specifically at approximately 8 50 p.m central time on or about september 11th 2023 founder one searched on google time in moscow the time was in fact 4 50 a.m in moscow approximately three days later on or about september 14th 2023 Founder One followed up in the Investor Discord channel writing, quote, Hey, Persona One, just wanted to follow up and see if your finance department has any updates on the transfers, end quote. Kalashnikov and Afanasieva begin operations at U.S. Company One. As U.S. Company One prepared to launch in the fall of 2023, consistent with Persona One's instruction to Founder One to work with the Russian firm we agreed to hire, Founder One introduced Kalashnikov to U.S. Company One employees and affiliates as an outside editor hired by U.S. Company One's investor. So they were lying to their employees saying that Kalashnikov was a outside editor that was hired by Tenet's investor. Dude, the web of lies. This is how deep this stuff goes, man. In this role, Kalashnikov monitored U.S. Company One's internal communications and edited content published by U.S. Company One without disclosing that he was a Russia Today employee. Kalashnikov also introduced his fellow Russia Today employee, Afanasieva, to provide additional day-to-day -day direction to U.S. Company One employees and commentators as set forth below. So Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, Taylor Hansen, Matt Christensen, and Lauren Southern were receiving communications directly from Kalashnikov and Afanasieva, who are the two folks that work at Russia Today, but they were under the impression that those two people were outside editors that worked for Edward Gregorian. That's what they were told. All right, so on or about August 7th, 2023, Founder One created a Discord channel for the production of videos by one of the 
six commentators listed on U.S. Company One's website and told Commentator 4 that Kalashnikov is, quote, heading up the editing team so you and him can start to discuss how to get started working together, end quote. On the U.S. Company One's Discord server, Kalashnikov requested raw footage from Commentator 4 and later shared an edited version of Commentator 4's first video for U.S. Company One. Kalashnikov similarly participated in a Discord channel on the U.S. Company One's Discord server for another commentator listed on U.S. Company One's website as Commentator 5. Communications on that channel included, among other things, Kalashnikov requesting raw footage from Commentator 5 and sharing an edited video. On or about November 9th, 2023, Founder 1 messaged Producer 2 on Discord in part that Edward hired Kostya's team. In other words, that Edward Gregorian had hired Kalashnikov's purported editing team. On or about August 17th, 2023, Kalashnikov informed Founder 1 that Kalashnikov had added Helena Shudra, whom Kalashnikov described as a member of my team who would be coordinating the editing team to U.S. Company One Discord server. Digital forensic evidence confirms that Helena Shudra was in truth and in fact Afanasieva, who is the employee of Russia Today. For example, the email account used to register the Helena Shudra Discord account bears a Russian web domain and the email handle Afalena1997, which is composed of the first three letters of Afanasieva's surname, a variant of Afanasieva's first name, Elena, in Afanasieva's birth year, 1997. Damn, she's pretty young. I didn't know that. Moreover, between in or about February 2024 and in or about March 2024, the Helena Shudra Discord account was accessed approximately 173 times from a Moscow-based IP address that was also used to access Afanasieva's personal Gmail address on approximately 12 occasions. On approximately 163 occasions, that same IP address was also used to access the Victoria Pesti, Discord account, which as set forth below was another fake persona used by Afanasieva at US Company One Tenant. Afanasieva initially adopted a similar editorial role as Kalashnikov, for example, in communications on the US Company One Discord server. She solicited raw footage from and circulated edited videos for review by Commentator 4 after the public launch of US Company One. However, Afanasieva used the Helena Shudra persona and the Victoria Pesti persona to push a Russia Today message through U.S. Company One and expand its viewership as set forth below. The web just gets more complicated and more complicated. It's insane. The amount of documentation that the U.S. Public Affairs and Department of Justice have on this is crazy. They were monitoring these guys for a long time. On or about February 16th of 2024, Afanasieva said to Founder One on Discord, quote, I do worry that neither Commentator 3 nor Commentator 1 share any raw videos posted on X. Commentator 2 shared only one video this week. Commentator 4 didn't share any raw videos. She only shared her mini doc and its promo. Commentator 5 is good at sharing our content so far. End quote. Afanasieva then asked, do you think it would be possible if producer 1 could start posting videos a bit earlier? Founder 1 responded that Founder 1 would talk to producer 1 about posting earlier and in fact did so. A few days later, Afanasieva again messaged Founder 1 saying, quote, is producer 1 going to post things earlier today? I think we need to post things earlier and ask the commentators, media managers to share raw videos with subtitles posted on US Company One X. At least one share per day, not one share per week. End quote. Founder One replied that Founder One asked Producer One to share at least once per day with the creators, but noted that the commentators were not contractually obligated to share US Company One's content. Afanasieva, as Helena Shudra responded, quote, I know this is not an obligation, but we are falling behind with numbers and we need to make our best so the creators can share one raw video per day, at least for now, end quote. With Founder One's assistance, Afanasieva amplified her request that U.S. Company One's commentators promote U.S. Company One's content right by repeating that request through a second fake persona, Victoria Pesti. On or about February 2024, Afanasieva messaged Founder One on Discord saying, quote, please make invite for Victoria end quote, referring to an invitation for the new Victoria Pesti to join the U.S. Company One Discord, meaning joining the Discord for Tenet. After Founder One responded that Founder One had already sent the invitation, quote, yesterday, end quote, Afanasieva replied, quote, sorry, I thought you would send it to me here, thus implying that Afanasieva was operating both the Helena Shudra and Victoria Pesti accounts. Jeez. Founder One then assured Afanasieva that Founder One would, quote, intro Victoria to the chat and restate the importance of social sharing, end quote. The next day, as promised, Founder One posted a message to 
Tenet's Discord server, introducing Victoria Pesty from, quote, our investors team, end quote. Bro, the amount of work that was put into this to push disinformation from Russia, like, is unbelievable. I'm not, not even surprised. Or to push propaganda, you know. Afanasieva, when she was posing as Victoria Pesty, announced that, quote, From now, our top priority should be establishing tenant social media presence, and we do ask you to start sharing tenant posts throughout your own accounts daily, end quote. Second, with Founder 1 and Founder 2's backing, Afanasieva directed U.S. Company 1 staff to publish specific content with Afanasieva identified. On about January 15th of 2024, Founder One wrote in a channel on the US Company One Discord server, which was the producer Discord channel, comprised of Afanasieva, Kalashnikov, Founder One, Founder Two, Producer One, Producer Two, and Producer Three. Quote, Helena is going to start creating customized videos for us to post on our socials of viral content that's floating around, end quote. In about January 2024 and in or about June of 2024, Afanasieva posted links to approximately 841 video clips, which were routinely posted by tenant staff onto US Company One's or tenant social media channels. On occasion, tenant staff privately contact the founders to push back on Afanasieva's content and were rebuffed. On or about February 15th of 2024, Afanasieva, when she's posing as Helena Shudra, shared with US Company One a video of a well-known US political commentator visiting a grocery store in Russia talking about Tucker Carlson. That's the video they're talking about. So they were talking about Tucker Carlson. That's crazy. Afanasieva shared Tucker Carlson's video of him inside the grocery store into the producer Discord channel, and then producer one privately messaged founder two on Discord saying, quote, they want me to post this, end quote, referencing that video. Producer one said, quote, it just feels like overt shilling, end quote. Founder two replied that founder one, quote, thinks we should put it out there, end quote. Producer one acquiesced, responding, quote, all right, I'll put it out tomorrow, end quote. As another example, on or about March 22nd of 2024, Afanasieva, when she's posing as Helena Shudra, shared in the producer Discord channel a video of the March 22nd 2024 terrorist attack on a music venue in Moscow, which approximately 145 people and injured hundreds more. Producer One privately messaged Founder One writing, quote, I don't know if you saw it, but they want me to post some footage from an attack in Moscow today. There's a watermark in the middle of the page that's blurred, which looks bad, and it's also pretty graphic. You can see people getting shot albeit from far away. Founder One did not push back on the content of the clip, but replied in the producer Discord channel saying, quote, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to blur out someone's watermark, end quote. Afanasieva then assured the group that, quote, it's fine, no worries, it falls under fair use, end quote. Producer One and Producer Two found a clip of the attack without a watermark and posted the clip to X, satisfying Afanasieva's request. The next day on or about March 23rd, 2024, Afanasieva privately messaged Founder One on Discord Discord when she was pretending to be Helena Shudra, saying, quote, one of our creators record something about the Moscow attack, end quote. But despite public reporting that the foreign organization ISIS had claimed responsibility for the attack, Afanasieva requested that U.S. Company One blame Ukraine and the United States, writing, quote, I think we can focus on the Ukraine slash U.S. angle. The mainstream media spread fake news that ISIS claimed responsibility for the attack, yet ISIS itself never made such statements. All are now detained while they were headed to the border with Ukraine, which makes it even more suspicious why they would want to go to Ukraine to hide, end quote. So basically, and everybody knows this at this point, like that attack was conducted by the Islamic State. It was already proven that that's what happened, but they wanted to push a narrative to make it look like it was Ukrainians that did the attack because they fled into Ukraine after they egressed from the attack. So they're trying to get the media company Tenant and all of their commentators to push that narrative to make it look look like that it was Ukrainians that did it when it had already been solidly affirmed and proven that it was the Islamic State was responsible for it. Founder One responded that Founder One would ask Commentator 3 and on the next day confirmed that Commentator 3 said, quote, he's happy to cover it. By in or about June 2024, Founder One authorized Afanasieva and Kalashnikov to post content directly on Tenet's platform, bypassing U.S. Company One's employees altogether. Specifically on or about June 12, 2024, in a Discord message, Founder One informed Producer One that going forward, Helena's team, i.e. Kalashnikov and Afanasieva, would be posting their own vids directly to the U.S. Company One social media accounts. Basically, at that point, Lauren Chen gave direct access, like unfettered access to serve as Russia Today's messaging tenants audiences, like direct messaging.
Founder 1 and Founder 2 profited from their unregistered services to Russia today. Starting in approximately August of 2023, Founder 1 and Founder 2, Lauren Chen and Liam Donovan, typically submitted two invoices each month to Persona 1 on the Investor Discord channel, one invoice for US Company 1's expenses, such as its payments to its commentators, and another invoice for Founder 1 and Founder 2's own fees and commissions. Between in or about August 2023 and in or about June 2024, Founder 1 and Founder 2 invoiced UK Shell Entity 1 more than $9.3 million for US Company 1's expenses, which they asked to be paid to US Company 1's bank account, which means directly to Tenet's bank account. Founder 1 and Founder 2 also invoiced UK Shell Entity 1 more than seven. $160,000 for their own fees and commissions, some of which they asked to be paid to Canadian Company One. After Founder One and Founder Two transmitted their monthly invoices to Persona One on the Investor Discord channel, Persona One typically acknowledged receipt and confirmed payment. Between in or about October 2023 and in or about August 2024, the U.S. Company One bank account received approximately 30 wire transfers from foreign entities totaling approximately $9.7 million. That's a lot of money. U.S. Company One dispersed most of these funds to its contracted commentators, including approximately $8.7 million to the production companies of Commentator One and Commentator Two and Commentator Three alone. That is insane. $8.7 million went to Benny Johnson's production company, Tim Pool's production company, probably Taylor or Dave Rubin's production company, likely. They don't say that in here. They just say Commentator One, Two, and Three. Consistent with Founder One's February 8th, 2023 warning to Persona One that, quote, it would be very hard to recoup the costs for the likes of commentator one and commentator two based on ad revenue from web traffic or sponsors alone end quote u.s company one's foreign wire transfers far exceeded its receipts of advertising revenue indeed the approximately 9.7 million dollars that u.s company one received from foreign wire transfers represented nearly 90 percent of all the deposits into the u.s company one's bank account from in or about october 2023 to in or about august of 2024 dude meaning like last month. U.S. Company One received its 30 inbound wire transfers from seven foreign entities, none of which were U.S. Company One's contract counterparty, UK Shell Entity One. Three of the rem remitting entities, Turkish Shell Entity One through Turkish Shell Entity Three, listed identical addresses at an office building in Istanbul, Turkey. Three of the remitting entities, UAE Shell Entity Number One, UAE Shell Entity Two, UAL Shell Entity Three, listed different addresses in Dubai, and Raz Al Khaimah, United Arab Emirates. And the last remitting entity, Mauritius Shell Entity 1, listed an address in Mauritius. Of the seven foreign entities, only UAE Shell Entity 1, UAE Shell Entity 2, and Mauritius Shell Entity 1 have websites. Like the website of Czech Shell Entity 1, the websites of UAE Shell Entity 1 and Shell Entity 2 and Mauritius Shell Entity 1 reflect seemingly odd and inconsistent information. For example, Mauritius Shell Entity 1 appears to maintain two websites using nearly identical domain names one claims to supply agricultural products and the other purports to be a digital marketing agency as another example the website of the uae shell entity one states in part quote our company is always happy to create and implement new projects on the market we are ready to provide full range of services from creating a project to bringing it to the world's top ratings end quote and the website of the uae shell entity two claims to provide a random array of services ranging from construction projects to analysis of investment attractiveness to yacht consultancy as well as the sale of textile products, electronic goods, and jewelry. The websites of UAE Shell Entity 1, UAE Shell Entity 2, and Mauritius Shell Entity 1 make no mention of Edward Gregorian, Shell Entity 1, Persona 1, Persona 2, Persona 3, Viewpoint Productions, Hungarian Shell Entity 1, or Czech Shell Entity 1. I've never met this man in my life. Contrary to US Company 1's invoices, which reflect fees for staff and commentators, as well as Founder 1 and Founder 2's commissions, the wire notes of many of U.S. Company One's inbound wire transfers ascribe the payments to the purchase of electronics. For example, the wire note for Turkish Shell Entity One's $318,000 wire payment to U.S. Company One on March 1st of 2024 read, quote, buying goods INV-013 iPhone 15 Pro Max 512 gigabytes, end quote. <laughs> Bro. What? 
It doesn't even say what the wire transfer was for. This is crazy, man. Crazy. To deliver funds into the U.S. company one bank account, each of the U.S. company wins 30 inbound international wire transfers, which totaled nearly $10 million as set forth above, utilized the correspondent bank in Manhattan, New York. According to records of the FARA unit, neither U.S. company one nor founder one nor founder two has ever registered as a foreign agent with the attorney general. Statutory allegations. Count one, conspiracy to violate the Foreign Agents Registration Act. From at least in or about December 2022 through at least in or about September 2024 in the Southern District of New York, Russia, and elsewhere, Konstantin Kalashnikov, aka Kostya, and Elena Afanasieva, aka Lena, the defendants and others known and unknown knowingly and intentionally did combine, conspire, confederate, and agree together and with each other to commit an offense against the United States to wit, to knowingly and willfully act and cause U.S. Company 1, Founder 1, and Founder 2 to act as agents of foreign principles without registering with the Attorney General in violation of Title 22, United States Code, Sections 612 and 618. It was a part of an object of the conspiracy that Konstantin Kalashnikov and Elena Afanasieva, the defendants and others known and unknown would and did knowingly and willingly act and cause U.S. Company 1, Founder 1, and Founder 2 to act as agents of foreign principles without registering with the Attorney General as required by law in violation of Title 22, United States Code, Sections 612 and 618. Overt Acts in furtherance of the conspiracy and to effect the illegal object thereof, Konstantin Kalashnikov, a.k.a. Kostya, and Elena Afanasieva, the defendants, and others known and unknown committed the following overt acts, among others, in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere. In or about August 2023, Kalashnikov added Afanasieva to the U.S. Company 1 Discord server. In or about 2024, Afanasieva circulated to U.S. Company 1 staff approximately 841 clips, which were routinely posted onto U.S. Company one's social media channels. In or about June of 2024, Founder One authorized Afanasieva and Kalashnikov to post content directly on their company's platform. Between in or about October 2023 and in or about August of 2024, members of the conspiracy caused U.S. Company One to receive approximately 30 international wire transfers from foreign shell entities in furtherance of the conspiracy, each of which was processed by a correspondent bank in the Southern District of New York. All right, count two, conspiracy to commit it money laundering. The grand jury further charges. The allegations contained in paragraphs 1 through 44 of this indictment are incorporated as though fully set forth herein. From at least in or about December 2022 through at least in or about September 2024 in the Southern District of New York, Russia, and elsewhere, Konstantin Kalashnikov and Elena Afanasieva, the defendants and others known and unknown, willfully and knowingly combined, conspired, confederated, and agreed together and with each other to commit money laundering in violation of Title 18 United States Code section 1956 in parentheses A to Alpha. It was part of an object of the conspiracy that Constantin, I'm just going to start saying Kostya and Lena because it's way, dude, it's a mouthful. The defendants and others known and unknown would and did transport, transmit and transfer and attempt to transport, transmit and transfer a monetary instrument and funds from a place in the United States to and through a place outside the United States and to a place in the United States from and through a place outside the United States with the intent to promote the carrying on of specified unlawful activity to wit felony violations of the Foreign Agents Registration Act in violation of Title 18 United States Code Section 1956A2 Alpha. Forfeiture allegations. Ooh, this ought to be good. As a result of committing the offense alleged in count one of this indictment, Kostya and Lena, the defendants, shall forfeit to the United States pursuant to Title 18 United States Code Section 98A1 Charlie and Title 28 United States Code Section 246-1 any and all property real and personal that constitutes or is is derived that proceeds traceable to the commission of said offense, including but not limited to a sum of money in United States currency representing the amount of proceeds traceable to the commission of said offense. As a result of committing the offense alleged in count two of this indictment, Kostya and Lena, the defendants, shall forfeit to the United States pursuant to Title 18, blah, 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 blah. any and all property real and personal involved in said offense or any property traceable to such property, including but not limited to a sum of money in United States currency representing the amount of 
property involved in said offense. Whoa, that's a mouthful. Substitute assets provision. If any of the above described forfeitable property as a result of any act or omission of the defendants, A, cannot be located upon the exercise of due diligence, B, has been transferred or sold to or deposited with a third person, C, has been placed beyond the jurisdiction of the court, D, has been substantially diminished in value, or E, has been commingled with other property which cannot be subdivided without difficulty, it is the intent of the United States pursuant to Title 21, United States Code Section 853 Papa, and Title 28, United States Code Section 2461 Charlie, to seek forfeiture of any other property of the defendants up to the value of the above forfeitable property. Signed, Damian Williams, United States Attorney. Bro, that was painful to get through all that. So bottom line is Kalashnikov and Elena Afanasyeva were basically pretending to be editors for the company the entire time that they were working for them. And so nobody at the company or their commentators knew they were Russian assets working for Russia Today. The funny thing about this whole thing is like, I think Fox News reached out to Russia Today asking for comment. And then they just responded by saying, ha, 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 And that was it. Lauren Chen and Liam Donovan are, are the ones that are cooked because they knew they were doing work for Russia today and getting paid by them. They knew the entire time. Bottom line is, uh, if you're getting paid a whole lot of money and it seems kind of fishy or you don't know who, the, like where the money's coming from, especially if it's like huge sums like what Benny Johnson and Tim Pool were getting paid, dude, $100,000 a video. Dude, they were rolling in dough. No wonder they, they're able to push mad content they got all these teams that are staffed because they can pay all these people like they're making six figures a month i mean they were probably after everything else is like combined they were probably making close to seven figures a month but again i don't think that they knew they didn't like a hundred percent know definitively that they were pushing kremlin propaganda they could have definitely picked up on some things if they were just a little suspicious which i guess that just goes to show you that some people are willing to put on blinders when they're making that money i know that was long and complicated but we made it through it and hopefully everyone has has a better understanding because I literally read the entire indictment to you. This is what the official indictment is, so wild.